Hey there, my friend and friends. VS Code is an extremely popular tool amongst developers. And if you're a new developer, you might have recently gone to their page to actually download the software. And when you got there, you might have wondered if you were in the right place because for something that is so popular, their page is kind of ugly and maybe even amateurish. So I thought it'd be fun to give it a redesign. And while it is an editor, it would, I guess, be a little apropos to use their own software to edit it. But then I was thinking since VS Code is actually a browser masquerading as an editor, I might as well use a browser as an editor to edit it. I think that makes sense. So yeah, I'm going to be using my dev tools to redesign VS Code. Let's dive in and see what I can do with it. So to get started on this, let's jump on over to VS Code's website and take a look at what we're going to be working with. And I think, it, I mean, it just looks so boring um, and does not look great. And so the first thing I'm going to do is open up my dev tools and take a look. Um, and let's just make it a bit bigger. So we have the desktop one right there. I want to focus on starting here and I'll sort of work my way down the page, I guess. Um, so let's just grab this little guy. And I, I just want to, I sort of want this. Like we, I don't know what to focus on here. We have this here with the button, which is sort of fighting with this because they're both kind of big, but this is smaller, but gets more attention because of the color on it. And then this image is really busy. Um, and so we have an H1, then we have the lead here. Lead. Oh, look, we're using Bootstrap. Interesting. Um, so I'm actually, I want to grab this H1 and move it outside of that row, which it doesn't seem to want to let me do. Because usually, like here, I can grab this and drag it down and you can see it actually switches that. Usually you can just move stuff where you want it to go. Ah, there we go. So I have the container and then I have my H1 on its own. Now it's breaking everything. Um, or you know what we could probably do? I, um, I can just take this row off. Nope. <laughs> uh, let's take these columns off too. There we go. We sort of got somewhere and I'm just going to take this column off as well because I don't want those there. We're going to be playing a little bit more with what's in there. Uh, but let's come on this H1 because I find like we, we should be just code editing redefine. That's exciting. It's a good a good slogan. Uh, so, you know, we should we should do more with that. So we have that there. So now that things are set up like that, we can move this up a little bit. So like here where we have the font size five, we could probably play around with that a little bit. Like even if I just made it 10, like now we see that we know what to look at and then we can sort of go from there. Uh, so like even, you know, it, it obviously the picture needs some work, but that's a bit better. So like now I, I just added some margin to the top and the bottom here and I switched the font over just so like we don't want it. 10 RAM would be way too big on smaller screens. Uh, and I set the margin in M. So just as we get to smaller screen sizes, the font is shrinking. We're also shrinking down on that. But when we're here, like here we see code editing redefined. Like I think that just it's so much more impactful. Uh, than what we had, then we get our, our little download thing down here. I think that's fine. Or this image that's here. It is a background image. Interesting. So just doing background position center, I think is better. But then can we do background size cover even? So I just fixed up this a little bit. Like I mentioned, it was kind of annoying me that we had that giant image coming that way. Uh, so now with the smaller screen sizes, you get the entire thing, which I think works fine. Uh, but now if we get onto this really big size, I just set it up so it'd be like that. And it was pretty easy to do. I just put a max height on the Jumbotron um, of 100 v dVH. So just if the keyboard comes in, not that it's only at big screen sizes. Um, and then I did an overflow of hidden. Now, interestingly, they actually had an overflow of visible on there. So I just threw an important because it was easier. Um, I'm not a fan of doing stuff like that most of the time, but with how this is set up, uh, I'm not really too concerned with losing everything here. I would definitely want to double check and not actually do that in reality um, or maybe have a media query. So if we got too narrow, um, but just for a quick thing like that, I think it, it looks pretty good, um, right? So we have that and it looks a lot better. Now what's really bothering me is this part here. Um, and that's because Right now, like, see how we have space on the top and bottom of these? We don't have any space here, which is, I guess they wanted it. So, like, the buttons are filling up, like, see how the background fills up that whole thing? But honestly, like, if we come in and take this thing, value props, and we just come and <laughs> family zero, 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 there's some questionable code on your site, VS Code. <laughs> what is that? Okay. <laughs> I'd like to know how that happened. Um, if we just do like a padding blocks, so that's top and bottom of like, I don't know, three rem, five rem, 
make it pretty big. Um, just look at, doesn't that look better? Like turn that off, turn it on. Don't be scared of having some white space. It just looks so much nicer. Um, and yeah, so already I think it's making a big improvement. Let's see what we can do with these testimonials down here. They're not terrible or actually, you know what? We're going to go see here. The writing's really cramped. And then here we have all this line height, like that line height, line height of four rem. That's nuts. Why would you do that? And why is it in rem? <laughs> I like that the font size is in rem. Um, we can just do like a line height here of 1.6, which is 1.6. If you really need like loose line height, 1.7. Um, but just like, let's turn that one on and let's like compare the different, like this is double space. Like you do in like a word document or something. I don't know. There we go. That's better. Um, I'm going to go with the 1.6 even, but obviously you can play around with that and put what you need, but I like that better. Um, and then the opposite here, whereas here, the line height looks so there's a min height line height again, this 2.4 rem, um, tweet body. Let's just say it's a 1.6 maybe even a 1.5 for that one. So like, obviously this depends a little bit on the screen size and stuff, but let's see what we can do with it. And I think we could definitely make these look better. So I'm going to give it a bit of thought, but before that, I just want to let you know that if you are struggling with CSS, I do have a course called CSS Demystified, which is all about helping you understand not so much about how to write CSS, but more about how to understand what's going on with your CSS. So you can start writing it with a lot more confidence and with like purpose to what you're doing. And in that course is actually a bonus two hour lesson. That's just about the dev tools, looking at some of the stuff I'm doing now, but also a lot more advanced stuff uh, that we can check for when it comes to debugging our CSS. Uh, so if you'd like more information on that, the link for it is in the description, but let's see what we can do uh, with these to make them look a little bit better. So I think part of the problem is just like with the little circle here and then this next to it, there's only so much you can really do. I could put it in a card, but that's not going to look great. So I have some ideas. I'll be back in a second to see if this works. So I've turned them back on to position absolute um, to get them to be like this, which is kind of interesting. So with height 100%. Um, and then a Z index of minus one to put them behind the text. Uh, and I turned off the border radius and we had the height and stuff that was mucking stuff up. Um, and yeah, they were circles with box shadows and stuff. So um, yeah, we're going to play around with this a little bit more, but I think we can do something interesting on the text div here. I can give this a bunch of padding that doesn't look so great though with the repeating image. Um, I'd set the background position over to the bottom, but I think we'll go with top. And then we can do a background repeat, no repeat on those. Perfect. And let's go back to this and find, I mean, I'm just, whatever, this is fine. We do something like that. Um, and one more thing, just we'll go to here. No, this one is the display flex, right? Okay. I ended up creating a grid that you can see on here, um, that I don't think I actually needed to bother with, but I did, <laughs> um, because I was having issues with the images sticking out and I thought it was something else where we didn't have space between them. Um, where's my left there, but because they're position absolute, I just needed a left and a top on them. Um, but it's sort of getting to where I want now what I'm not sure in dev tools, cause I don't profile image. We're going to try. Um, so let's copy that copy selector. Um, and then we're going to create, uh, I don't want the image. I want a new selector which would be just that. And I want the after on there. So I just put this in to make sure it will actually be working and we can see it is actually working now. So I don't see it actually showing up here or it's not that one. Is it? No. Um, that's the tweet. Anyway, we, we have it showing up. So, so that's good that it's working. Um, now what I want to do is let's just store my bottom of zero. Didn't go where I wanted it to nice. Oh, uh, position would help on that position. Absolute. So I need now is the image. See, the image has that whole height. Um, that, if I take that off, ah, there, perfect. Okay. That's what I wanted. I just don't need the height hundred percent on there. Um, now I need to get back to that pseudo element though, which could be problematic because I don't see it. There it is. Ah, good. Okay. So we got my pseudo element. So obviously I don't want that to be red, but let's say width is hundred percent. And then the background, we can just put a gradient here. Um, so we can just do like zero deg transparent to white. And then here I purposely put zero degrees just cause then I can take this and actually move it in my dev tools. Uh, cause I didn't know which way around I needed that. Um, and I think I'm actually going to get this at like 30% and then this could be at uh 30%. Oh, whoops. No, this one, take that off. Um, can I move? I was hoping maybe this could be at 70%, but you know what? It's not the same color as that. So this white, we can grab that. 
when you have colors, you get an eyedropper. So I can take the eyedropper and eyedrop the color I want it to go to, which does not look right at all. Uh, maybe there's actually a gradient here, so I'm going to eyedrop near the top instead. So that took a minute, but we got there in the end. We could probably make that, like, that's too big, obviously. Um, something like that that just gives it a little bit more. So here, we'll just do color of red just because it's fast, and then we can eye drop. We have the button right there, perfect. So I can just eye drop that blue, um, maybe add a bit of margin on that. So my margin's not working, and I'm not getting one of those tool tips, but I have a feeling we just need to display a block on that. There we go. Um, so yeah, now we get sort of just a sort of, we can play with that. Now this probably should be only on the top, so maybe uh, the bottom, I mean, margin block end, or actually, know what? That margin shouldn't be there. The margin should be on this one, so we already have the display blocks. Perfect. Margin block start of 1.5 rem. Uh, and I want that at the bottom. There we go. So actually by doing that, we sort of, I like this better because I've grouped the name more with what we had there. And then we get this coming, the name big. And then this, it's a little bit small. Font size is not 1.2 on there. I don't know what that's coming from. Is there a scale? You know, it doesn't have to be gigantic, but it's so small. And maybe if we just darken that up a little bit, I don't know, something on that, but it's so small. I'm not sure why. Um, we could probably dive in to figure it out. But so yeah, I think that looks a lot better than, than what we had before. It's, oh no. <laughs> Damn columns. Um, <laughs> getting bigger. Uh, that looks terrible. So, I mean, what I did, which probably, I guess, looking back is a mistake. Um, I should have put the gradient on the text, so then it wouldn't matter where it was. So if the pseudo element was on the text instead of on the image thing, um, that just would have made it a little bit more useful. Um, but we'll pretend that never happened, and it, it's all fine. And even like this, it's okay. It looks kind of weird with the gradient as we get smaller. Um, maybe I could fix that, actually. All right, I actually fixed that using something I've never done before. Or if I have, it's been a long time. I think this is back from like the old days. Um, but originally I put on the images or no, the text content for the text content itself. I'd originally put a really big padding value in pixels, but the problem is the image was changing shape, which would change the width of the element. Um, but for padding top and bottom or margin as a percentage is based on the width and not the height. So if the width is changing, that will match and always be the same. So we sort of fix that there. Um, maybe like a 93 or something. Oops. That's not what I wanted um 93 percent or something just to get the the name off the image a little more but there we go um i don't know if i use this if it's going to break everything but i think i think it's a big improvement over what we had so i'm going to leave it like that uh as i said down here this isn't really bothering me too much so i think i'm going to leave that alone we could probably spice that up a little bit but overall like the bottom part of this is fine um it's really this top section where we now focus a lot more on this we have this here and I think this testimonial looks a lot better than what we had. But I'd love to know uh, what you think of the, the redesign that I did here. Uh, we sort of tackled some of the main sections of it. So give me your input. And of course, if you are interested in that course, CSS Demystified, the link for it is in the description below. And with that, I'd like to thank my enablers of awesome and Rico, Michael, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.